Rivka and Ephron were opposites. In Pashat Chaye Sarah, we're told how Rivka greeted total strangers at the wellside in Mesopotamia. To Eliezer, she said, I'll give you something to drink. And then she ended up giving him and those with him and his camels sufficient to drink, prompting our commentators to say, Amrama'at va'asta harbe. She said little and she did much. Ephron, at the beginning of the parasha, promises Avram, the world, whatever you want, I'll do it for you, intimating it would be an absolute gesture, perhaps even free of charge. And then he ended up insisting that Avram should pay 400 shekels of silver for the plot to bury his wife Sarah, prompting our commentators to say, Amar harbei v'afilu ma'atlo asa. He said a lot and didn't even do a little. Notice that there is a remarkable feature in the verse describing the transaction between Ephron and Avraham. Vayishma Avraham el Ephron. Avraham listened to everything Ephron had to say. Vayishkol Avraham le Ephron. And then Avraham weighed the 400 silver shekels to give to Ephron. Now, the first Ephron in this verse is Ein Pei Reish Vav Nun. It is Malay, it is full with the Vav inside it. But just three words later, Vaishkol Avram, Le Ephron, Ephron is Chaser. There is no Vav in the Ephron. It's quite remarkable. There can be only one explanation. For as long as Ephron was promising so much to Avraham, he had the potential to be his full self. And that's why Ephron is spelt out in full. Once, however, there was no gesture whatsoever from him, and all he wanted to do was to take from the world around him, he became a diminished individual. And therefore, his name is spelt chaser, with something missing within it. Our tradition tells us about the two landlocked seas in the Holy Land. Now the Kinneret receives water from the River Jordan, which enters into it into the north, and then the Jordan again flows from it in the south. The Dead Sea, however, receives water from the Jordan, but that's where the River Jordan ends. The Kinneret has the shape of a harp. And the message of the Kinneret is that when you receive and then give, then you provide a melody of life. You provide joy and happiness to those around you. If, however, you're only there to receive, then it's as if you're just not there at all. And that's why the Dead Sea has that name. Rivka was a person who took and gave. She lived in order to utilize all the resources she had available to her to bless her surroundings. Ephron, however, was a person who just naturally took but had no desire to give whatsoever. The lesson for us is clear. As opposed to Ephron, symbolized by the Dead Sea, let us always strive to be like the Kinneret to give what we receive, to be a blessing to our environment, and to guarantee that we will always be a symbol of life. Shabbat Shalom.